What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 18 of the Charge to the Top here with Hereford FC and today I have for you guys an interesting tie as today we will be playing a FA Cup replay game, yes. And uh, well, what you might gather from that is we drew in the first match of that FA Cup qualify round, but that really doesn't tell the whole story when it comes to how our season's gone so far and really this game against Bryhouse today is... I feel like it's a pivotal point in our season, in truth. You can see here, obviously last episode we beat Sutton 4-3. Since then, a real mixed bag of results over the last seven games. It started off with what was another good win against Billericay as we went 3-1 up in this game. And as you can see, Ote grabbing two goals, Anthony Wright grabbing a goal as well. And, uh, well, we then followed that up with a defeat against Margate. But it was a narrow defeat. We were probably the better team. I felt we were very unlucky in this match. But, alas, uh, Margate running out victors at home in that match. Anyway, we followed that up with two very good wins against White Talk and Truro. And off the back of these results, we actually got the Manager of the Month award. And Ote was the Player of the Month. And it was all going really, really well, as you can see there. The win against uh, Whitehawk was convincing against uh, True Row here. You can see Ote grabbed another two. I think he had eight goals in his opening five or six games, which was really impressive for him. Um, however, it's kind of taken a turn for the worse in recent games. You can see here we lost against Maidenhead, of course, a team we are familiar with. We met them in the FA Cup last year. And uh, in this game, it was tight. It was 3-3 at halftime. You can see looking at the stats, there wasn't a lot to separate the sides. And uh, really, it came down to the fact that Maidenhead just took the chances that came their way. And I don't know, I feel like Ote had a really poor game by his standards. As I said, he's been banging in goals for us. But in this game, he went missing. Defensively, obviously, not great. And uh, the same could be said, I guess, about the next game as we lost to Hungerford 3-1. And um, I guess the big worry for me really is off the back of these kind of opening kind of league games you can see here is we yet to keep a clean sheet defensively. We just look a little bit frail, and that's a little bit of a problem. Anyway, in the FA Cup second qualifier round, as you can see here, we have Bryhouse, who are actually two or three divisions below us. I decided to play a completely rotated side. I thought that would be fine. You know, there'd be no worries there. Boy, I was wrong. Um, we scraped through in this game, and we were very lucky to get the draw. You can see here, quickly with a last-minute goal. In truth, you know, they took their chances that came their way, and it would have been a bit of a smash and grab had they won it, but the the late draw, I guess, is a little bit of a, a fortuitous result for us in truth. And as a result, I feel like this game against Bryhouse now, you know, if we lose in the FA Cup, it's not going to look very pretty for us. Four games without a win, two defeats in a row in the league, and uh, it'll be a bit of a dampener. Of course, I'm hoping that now that I am going to play my full-strength team rather than the rotated side I played against Bryhouse in the first game, that we can run out comfortable victors. But yeah, that's kind of how the season's opened up so far. You might think, by the way I'm talking, that things have been going really bad and that we're way down in the league. In truth, this league is very, very interesting from the off. As you can see here, the only team unbeaten are Western Supermare. Um, and with the exception of them... Everyone's kind of slipping up everywhere. You can see here, we're on eight, we're in 8th with 12 points. One win for us would see us go top. We're one point behind the team who are top of the table. Our goal difference is okay. It's not great because of the defeat we had um, uh, against Maidenhead where we lost 6-3. But yeah, it's very, very tight here. You know, it's anyone's game. Yes, we've not had the best start to the season, but we're fortunate, I guess, in a sense that uh, with there only being one automatic promotion spot, no team has, you know, won their opening seven games or won six, drawn one. Because in truth, if a team had done that, they'd be like, well, they'd be five or six points clear after seven games. It's been very tight. No one has really pulled away, as I said. Everyone's been losing and beating against everyone. And curiously, much like last year, we're not drawing games. <laughs> you can see here, we're the only team in the division after seven matches yet to draw a game, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, in terms of transfers and stuff that's been going on, there has been a few. I talked about the, the fact that kind of last episode, I wanted to add in players. We needed to add some strength and do that, I think we have. You can see here three new players, the first of which is Isaac Christie Davis, who joins us, the far, former Chelsea youngster. Looks like a very good playmaker, very, very talented. 20 years old, you'll notice his wage is pretty hefty compared to some of our other players. Uh, £750 a week he is on, but he looks like a very impressive player. I'm really interested to see how he can get on playing a playmaker role for us. You can see, so far he's made four appearances. 
He's not exactly shone thus far, but I have faith in him to come big for us. I think he's a very, very talented player. The next player we have, another player of a similar mould in a lot of ways. Can play centre attack in mid. Gives us a few options to maybe switch to a 4-2-3-1 if things don't really work out this year. And you can see here his name's Malik Hamilton. He's actually a Canadian youngster. Played a few times in the under-20 side. Um, you can see a former West Ham trainee. He's pretty fast. He's got good creativity. Really like the fact he's got good flair. Technically... Fairly, fairly solid. And, um, yeah, just an exciting player to have in at the club. Only £300 a week. Comes in as a rotation option. Pretty happy about that. And the last player we brought in, a fairly big transfer by our standards. A former Liverpool trainee, um, signed from Telford. You can see here Chris Owens, left-back. He looks pretty good. 19 years old. Can play, as I said, left-back or left-wing-back. Very technically gifted player. Definitely one of the best players in our team. Really like the look of him. You can see, looking at his career stats here, he's had a fairly solid year last year in the Vanarama North with Telford. Um, he got a 7.36 uh, last season, or rather this season in the Vanarama North. You can see here a 7.48. Of course, making the switch over to the Vanarama South to play for us. I think he's the kind of player who can come up very, very big for us. He's a very good player at this level of football. Well suited to Vanarama National Football. Has a little bit of potential about him. And uh, yeah, he definitely adds some quality, particularly in the defensive department. So anyway, those are the transfers I've made. We still have money to spend, and I'm still looking at ways to spend it. You can see here the transfer budget remaining sits at £50,000. Uh, with the Owens transfer, there was about £40,000 in a combination of a compensation fee for Telford, uh, but also a fee to pay him to actually come to the club. And Well, uh, £40,000 for a team at our level would generally be quite a large chunk of money, particularly for a player who's only signed kind of a, a one-year contract. But for us, we can afford that kind of transfer, and so... I was kind of willing to make it happen, and I'm pretty happy to get him in. Anyway, you can see here, I'm still looking at players to bring in. These are all considered unrealistic options right now. But, um, you know, going through all of these, some of the players are kind of willing to talk to you. If you go through every single one on the list, I'm kind of waiting, um, you know, to see if there's any more that come available. Definitely a few players who I've really got my eye on. Players like Jamal Loza, uh, who I believe is a former Norwich trainee. You can see he was playing for Maidstone in the Vanarama South last year. Got released. He doesn't want to join because of the financial package, but he's the kind of player I'm looking at. And if we could get one or two of these players here, you know, maybe in a few months' time they're going to be unhappy about the lack of first-team football and the lack of a club that they found. They might be interested in talking to us. I think they'd be very, very welcome additions to our side. So, yeah, with the exception of, I guess, a bit of a dip in form of late, it's not been the worst start to the season. We could definitely be doing better in the league, but one point off the team who are top, I'm still pretty confident in this. And we go into today's game against Bryhouse. Hoping for a good result here. We're going to play the 4-4-2. This is the team we're going to go with in goal. Joel Driscoll, the Australian. At left back, we go with the new kid on the block, Chris Owens. 19 years old. Fantastic player. Very good going forward as well. On the right-hand side, we go with club captain Kane Smith. In the centre-back positions, we go with, of course, George Johnson, the young Scotsman. Um, formerly of Liverpool. To his right, we have Piggott, uh, who, to be honest, has really impressed me this year. I think he can be a very, very talented player. You can see his determination's dropped quite significantly. I don't know why that is. I guess it might be an off-the-ball incident, or it might be to do with our overall squad personality rubbing off on him. But uh, either way, he's still a very, very good centre-back for us. Very ta kind of technically gifted as a defender. You know, good heading, good marking. Perhaps his tackling could be better, but his positioning and decisions are great for at this level. Um... And yeah, it, it's, he's an interesting player for sure. I really like the look of him. I think he can improve as well. Out on the left-hand side, I'm not going to play Anthony Wright. Actually, no, I am going to play Anthony Wright. I've lined. Um, he's got four goals and four assists in seven games. It'd be pretty harsh to drop him. But yeah, he's going to start out on the left. Out on the right, we're going to play Keenan Bennett. Of course, formerly of Tottenham. A very talented player. Uh, signed a new contract that takes him to the end of next season, which is great. We actually had Millwall having a look at him at one point in pre-season. So I was determined to get him tied down to a new deal. He has signed that now, which is very, very good news indeed. In the centre of midfield, we go with Duffman, uh, who... Last year didn't really impress me that much. Jay Harris kind of got ahead of him. But you can see here, seven games, four assists, a 7.3 rating for him. Been fantastic this year. Alongside him, Christy Davis, the new kid on the block, kind of replacing uh, Dan Townsend in the first team. Um, but I'm sure Dan will get run outs, particularly if Christy Davis can't really step up his performances, as I said. Four games into his time here at Hereford, he's been a little bit less than what I wanted in terms of his contribution to the team. Anyway, at target man, we go with Joe Quigley. Got three goals in five games in the league and two assists, a 7.42 average rating for him. And up top, we go with Ote for today's FA Cup game. You can see here, nine goals, one assist in seven games. I love this guy. I think he's a fantastic player. A really big difference maker with this guy is the fact he's a, like, a very consistent performer. 
If you don't know, uh, just to break it down basically, um, the attributes that you see here um, are a player's kind of maximum performance level. If they have the best game that they can, they'll perform to these attributes. And what consistency plays a large role in is how consistently they perform to their maximum ability. So that's why sometimes players will have off games and good games. And as a result, a player who's consistent at this level is quite rare, but is also very good because you can have a really talented player, but if their consistency is 1 out of 20, it means they're only ever going to play to their peak, you know, very, you know, once in a blue moon. Whereas with a guy like Ote, he's probably not the best striker in this league, but he's got great consistency. As you can see, obviously, great pace, great finishing, good composure, good off the ball for at this level. And he's consistently playing to that level. And that is something that you... I can't understate how important that is at this level. It's very rare that you find a player with consistency, so don't be put off by players who don't have consistency, but at the same time, definitely consider that. If you find a player with good consistency who looks semi-decent, he's probably going to be a quite nice asset to your team. Anyway, let's get into today's game. We are the big favourites to win it, and last time we even played this team it kind of at the weekend, we were playing a fully rotated side. So, I, d I don't know, I feel like there's a chance here for us to get a win and perhaps demolish them. That's what I'm hoping for. Of course, we scraped by 2-2 with our second team. We're at home now, you know, in our own back garden, playing our full strength side. But as I said, if we were to lose this game, I feel like it could be quite a pivotal point in our season. We are currently three games without a win. We have got a little bit of a cup curse while we've been Hereford manager in terms of just struggling to win these kind of matches and make it through. Uh, in the FA Cup, we're yet to get to the first round, which is not not necessarily surprising, but it's something that I would be liking to strive towards, or at least get close to achieving. And well, so far we've been largely disappointing in our FA Cup appearances. So we'll see how we get on today. We are, of course, playing in our white kit, and Christy Davis, you know, big pressure on him as well as Owens. I guess they're going to be hopefully giving a good performance for you guys in their first ever uh, games as kind of Hereford players in a live commentary. Nice win by Quigley there. And now Duffman to Christy Davis. Can he thread through Ote? Plays it actually to Bennett's. Nice ball there. Plays it into Ote, who cannons it against the crossbar. You would have backed him to score. Unfortunately, the ch chance is squandered. But now Owens, the new kid on the block, crosses it in quickly with an absolutely laughable first touch. It was so bad. Came to him. It was a really nice ball, actually, by Chris Owens, the left back. And, uh, well, quickly. <laughs> He didn't have the greatest of first touches. I really hope that wasn't a shot. Unfortunately, couldn't get the ball down under his control and it got cleared away to safety. But anyway, looking at the stats, kind of going as you'd expect. We're dominating possession, but well, with 30 minutes gone, we've hit the woodwork once. We've had three half chances, but it remains nil-nil. And given how Bryhouse played in the previous game against them, I can't really take for granted the kind of position we're in right now because they hit us on the break and they punished us. In the previous game, of course, slightly different kettle of fish, I guess, in the sense that we are now playing our first team. But at the same time, well, it looks like at half time it's going to remain nil nil. We've been all over them in this game. 57% of possession. They yet to have a shot at all. We've had 14 shots in total, but we've not broken the deadlock. And that is just not good enough, in my opinion. There is one player who I definitely want to give some game time today. And it's this guy, Joe Willock. Uh, he's a very ver versatile kind of midfielder, of course, signed him this year. Can play anywhere across the attacking midfield range. Can also play kind of either wide midfielder position. He's okay at centre mid too, although I wouldn't necessarily play him there. But certainly as a winger, he's a fantastic option for us to have. And I think he's a player who will get quite a lot of first team football this year. I feel like he is, um, you know, on par with Scully in terms of his contribution he can make for the former Arsenal youngster Willock. But anyway, 0-0 still. We go into the second half looking for a better performance. The team talk was good. I told the players exactly how I felt. It's not been good enough. Just a reminder, if this remains a draw going into the 90th minute, uh, it will, of course, go to extra time and penalties. So that is something to consider, perhaps. But no, 10 minutes into the second half, not really a change of tone from what we saw in the first half. It's just not quite been good enough. And well, with 15 minutes gone into the second half, Brian House, they're yet to show us anything going forward, but we're yet to have a real good opportunity to score and, well, we yet to get a goal. And, well, with 25 minutes left, I've got to be weighing up my options sooner rather than later. And, uh, well, they've got a set piece here. Paul hits the woodwork. Will they get the rebound? They do. You just knew it was going to happen. Bryhouse full-on FMing us as things stand. There is, what, 25 minutes left in this game. We need to make some changes. Duffman having a really poor game in the uh, centre mid position. I'm going to take him off, I think. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm going to bring on Dan at Townsend for him. And we'll play him at the advanced playmaker role. I'm also going to take off Keenan Bennett, who I feel like has been a little bit 
terrible for us and bring on Joe Willock. And uh, I think we'll hold on to our last sub for now. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to push both wide midfielders into the final third. We're going to go a little bit more aggressive in that regard. Um, and we are going to go just a little bit more direct with our play. I feel like that is something that's perhaps necessary at this point in time. But yeah, let's see what we can do here. I want to try and stretch them wide if we can. And uh, hopefully Wright and Willock being given a little bit more, um, I guess, permission to roam forward can try and get us a goal and really kind of, you know, give Brighthouse a little bit more to worry about in the final third. 20 minutes left. We're a goal down. We've been the better team for the vast majority of this game, but it's just got the feeling of one of those matches. And, well, it's a good job we didn't make all our changes because George Johnson's picked up an injury. Dan Preston is going to have to come on for him. A very capable defender, um, but I would have liked that last sub to kind of be still, um, you know, usable going into the last 10 minutes to maybe bring on to him. But either way, we do have the ball here. Uh, although Bryhouse, they've got the ball here. Pollard going to be looking to get it forward. He does. Piggott, nice read by him, number four. Breaks the ball down well, although that clearance is not great. Now with Dan Townsend quickly to Dan Townsend, the sub. Spreads it out wide to Smith, the right back. Can Kane Smith get it in? And he doesn't. He plays it to Willock, the sub. Ball doesn't find its way in, and we could be in trouble here. They could hit us on the break. Peterson's through. It could be 2 0 here. Can Driscoll go big? He can't. We get caught out at the back. We are two goals down against a team in a significantly lower division. We've been hit twice on the counter. We've looked defensively fragile this season. And ultimately, that has been our undoing in this game so far. We've got to go for it now. We are in a, a, a tricky position, to say the least. And, uh, well, I feel like at this point now, it's time to send the cavalry up the pitch and try and make something happen. We are going to switch to a 4 one 3-2, I guess you'd call it. It's going to be a very different system. We, we need to get something in this game. We're going to look to exploit the middle. We're going to play as very, very narrow. We're going to look for the overlap. We don't have a lot of time to save this game, in truth. And I thought the 2-0, or rather the 2-2 draw was a bit of a blip. You know, maybe I could blame it on the fact I was playing our reserves. In this game, Brighthouse, they've punished us for our mistakes. They've had three shots. One was the free kick that then had a rebound, which they scored. They scored hitting us on the counter. Time's ticking away here. We've not got time. They're on the attack again. Surely it's not going to be another goal for them. We're on the attack now. Can Dan Townsend spark something? Ote, can he win the foot race? He can. It's going to find its way into the back of the net. It's a good run by him. It has... A little bit of a weird flashback to the last game we had in a live com where a very similar goal was scored where the keeper didn't beat Ote in a foot race. This time Ote, great tackle by him actually to stop Whitehouse clearing it. And uh, well, it's an open goal to tap it into and immediately he pulls the ball out the back of the net. We're back up the field. We have five minutes to make something happen. I've probably got to go on overload. Not enough time here to sit and wait. We need another goal just to take this to extra time. And well, we have a chance here. Owens to Preston. With Owens now. Christy Davis to Townsend. Options in the final third. Dan Preston. Oh, not Pre Dan Preston. Dan Townsend. Willock, quickly, please. Let's go. The comeback is done. And we are very, very lucky bunnies. It's flashbacks the last time we played them. I'm going to be honest. Last time I played this um, side, I did the exact same tactical change when it came to throwing men forward to get the last minute goal to make it 2-2. Now, I think we stay on attacking. We stay with the 4-1-2-1-2. It seems to actually work quite nicely for us there. But we do know that extra time could well be on the horizon. Three minutes left in this game. We have fought back magnificently from a situation that, in truth, we should never really be in. I'm going to tell the players I'm not happy with their performance. Um, good reactions by everyone but our goalkeeper. What a weird game of football this has been. Bryhouse must feel so hard done by. We have just crushed the dreams of the underdog. But, well, there is still a job to be done here as we go into extra time. It's 2-2. They've had two shots on target. They've both gone in. And, um, I don't know, it's a bit of a head-scratcher in truth, isn't it, that we're in this situation here. But, well, we've got to try and make things happen. Quickly crosses in. Ote's there. It's 3-2. We have scored how many goals in how many minutes? It's been quick. We have scored three goals in the last 10 minutes of football that's been played. Caden Smith with the throw in to Quigley. Takes one touch, crosses it into his strike partner. Lovely ball in. Down that corridor of uncertainty. The keeper doesn't know whether to come or leave it. In the end, he doesn't either. And, uh, well, it's an easy tap-in for Ote. And that should be now a seen cruise control. You'd think until the end of extra time. But my word, I said this match could prove to be a turning point in our season. It still could be. 
Um, and particularly if we'd lost this, it could have been bad. And, well, it's not over yet. I shouldn't talk like it's over. Bryhouse, you know, they've scored two against us. Now, the team on the attack here, surely they're not going to get a goal. goal. Preston does well there. Ote now through on goal. Can he finish it? He can't this time. The keeper saves it, denies him the hat-trick. But uh, that was a good chance to put the game beyond doubt. I shouldn't talk about this game like it's over yet. Bryhouse have proven to us they are capable of scoring. They are capable of punishing us on the break. And uh, we need to be wary of that. 15 minutes left in this game. We're 3-2 up. It's not comfortable, is it? You want one more goal just to put this game beyond doubt. Statistically, we've been by far and away the better team. We've shown our class. But fair play to Bryhouse. They held on in this game. At 2-0 up with, what, seven minutes left of the game. I'm sure they thought they'd won. But our team has shown terrific character in this game to come back and win. And, uh, well, we just have a limited time now just to make sure that we do kind of see out this game. 13 minutes and counting. 3-2 to the good. It's a goal kick here by Whitehouse. Up the field to Peterson. Imagine that Bryhouse are going to be friends and men forward. Maybe leave themselves exposed at the back. Big ball over to Quigley. He's not the fastest, but he does win that foot race. Unfortunately for him, not the greatest of touches. But back with Owens now. Option down the line. Great ball to right. Can he get the ball in the mixer? He can. Ote's there. He is going to get his hat trick. He has been one of our big players over the last year or so. It's his 12th goal of the season already. And we're only at the end of September. And, well, you'd have to say Ote's finishing um, has really bailed us out this game. Great ball up the field by Owens there. Nice ball in by right. Direct play. Lovely finish by Ote. He hammers it home on that left peg of his. And, uh, well, I kind of feel bad for Bryhouse. Because based off the way that they perform, the way that they hit us on the break, they probably deserve to get more from this game. But we have crushed the dreams of their fans, all kind of ten of them in the away end. Um, and we are going to, you'd think now, see ourselves um, going through to the next round, which is only the third qualifying round of the FA Cup. Still a long way to go. But, uh, well, Oti on the attack here, not the greatest finish by him there. Was a chance to get his fourth goal of the game. Um, but as the commentator has described it just down there at the bottom in the text, but he said it's the Ote show today. It really has been. He's been the difference maker. He's on a 9.5 rating. Quickly alongside him's played very well on an 8.8. .8. And, well, that is going to be all she wrote for this game, I think, unless it's going to be a very late kind of goal that's really unnecessary. And at this point, Bryhouse, the heads have already dropped. The game is over. It finishes 4-2 here at Edgar Street. I said this game could prove to be a turning point in the season one way or another. Some rash tactical decisions perhaps have seen us get back into this game in terms of throwing men forward with not a lot of time remaining. We've got the result that we needed. Ote played very, very well again for us. He really has been the defining player of Hereford FC over the last season, certainly. And, uh, well, he's turned up again big for us with a hat-trick in this game. That does see us win the second qualifying round. Unfortunately, Johnson has broken his toe, going to be out for two to three months, kicking the ball. What are you doing toe-poking it? Johnson, that is not a good injury uh, for us to receive. And it's going to mean that there's an opportunity that opens up perhaps for one of our players um, kind of in the centre defence area. If we just look at our centre-back options, you can see we've got Dan at Preston here. Uh, we've also got Mason Watkins. Both players are going to be perhaps sniffing out that new first-team spot that's going to be available. Worth noting that Ashley Baker I have sent out on loan to Kingstonian. Um, and there are a few other players out on loan. Danny Smith, the youngster, 18 years old, going to be playing in the division we were in last year, the Southern Premier for Worcester, who were only relegated from this division last year. I think that's going to be a good opportunity for him to play regular first team football um, for Worcester so I'm kind of excited about that it's a good loan for him but yeah that centre back issue is well a little bit of a problem now we've got some okay players waiting in the kind of reserves we've got players like Tyler here who's a very very good centre back um, certainly is kind of a fifth choice option for us to have in the first team the kind of player we can call upon and uh, reply, reply upon if we need to but anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up this episode from me. A real let-off. We managed to scrape through in the FA Cup. Uh, the next game is going to be against Berry Town. I'm probably not going to live on that one in truth. They are in the same division or the same tier, actually, as Bryhouse were in. So that should hopefully be a relatively straightforward game. In terms of when we'll be back, I think we may do the Maidstone game. Uh, they're currently sixth in the league. That game's in, what, six matches time? Uh, they're quite an interesting team, Maidstone, because they've got some very good players, perhaps the best players in the league. Um, if I show you here, they've got Charlie Ward, who's a very, very talented player. And I believe that they were certainly the favourites to go up this year, Maidstone, as kind of season leaders. If we look here, you can see they do have the best odds behind them. They've got a few players in the kind of best team 
uh, in the league. So that could be an interesting match, certainly, for us to take them on in and uh, should make for good viewing, I think. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. As always, we got very, very lucky. If you've got any comments, of course, with regards to this series, leave them down in the comments below. And uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. And you're